Hey guys, welcome to day two of percentages. Today we're going to talk about percent change and error. And I am Miss Woods. And I'm Mrs. Gross. And we are going to go ahead and get started. Miss Gross is going to go over some of the definitions with you guys. So the first definition is percent change. Now percent change is when you want to, um, you're going from something to another value. You're going from one value to another value. So to find percent change, you want to subtract and then divide by the original. We'll show you some examples soon. Percent increase is percent change. So when you're changing from one number to another, it can either go up or it can go down. So percent of increase is the measure of percent change um, where it gains value. And percent decrease is the measure of change where it decreases in value. All right, so do you want to go over this one or do you want me to? Sure. So to find percent change, when you're solving for the percent, now sometimes it's going to ask you to solve for the value, but we're going to talk to you about both of those. When you want to find the percent, you set up a proportion just like we've been doing, but this time um, on the top, the numerator is where you're going to find the difference. You're going to subtract. Um, you're going to take the two values and you're going to subtract them. And you'll notice there's these little lines here. That's absolute value. And absolute value is the distance from zero on a number line. So you're going to take the new value minus the original value. If it's negative, you would keep it positive. If it's positive, you would still keep it positive. Absolute value is always positive. And then you're going to divide by the original or have it over the original. And then that's going to equal the percent over 100. And then you'll still cross multiply like we've always been doing. So the big difference here is um, the top number is the difference. The bottom number is the original percent over 100. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go over an example of that with you guys real quick. So we have this problem. It says, what is the percent of change from 7 to 5? So we are going to set it up just like Ms. Gross told us. The equation is going to be the absolute value of the difference. Sorry, that my handwriting looks really sloppy for some reason. Um, move this over here. Okay, then we have on the bottom, we have original value. And that equals the percent over 100. So that is the formula we're going to work with. So on this one, it says, what is the percent of change from 7 to 5? So to find the difference of that, we're going to take 7 minus 5. And again, we got to do the absolute value over the original. Our original, it says it went from, from 7 to 5. So our original will be 7. And our percent is what we are looking for. So we are going to give that, put X in for that. And then 100 stays the same. So our next step is we still have to figure out um, what our 7 minus 5 would be. So do this one over here. I'm going to actually here, I'll go underneath and hopefully I can put everything. So 7 minus 5 gives us 2. And the absolute value of positive 2 is still positive. That is 2 over 7 stays the same. Then we have x over 100. And like Ms. Gross said, we are going to cross multiply. So we are going to do 7 times x, which is 7x, 2 times 100, which is 200. And then we have, we had to divide each side by seven to get X by itself. And you have X equals, let's see, 200 divided by seven is 28.5, but we are gonna go ahead and round that up to 29. So I'm gonna write this a little bit better over here so y'all can see it a little nicer. So our answer would be 29%. That would be our, X. So for this one, 29%, we've got to figure out, we've got our options were 40% 40 decrease, 40% decrease, 29% increase, 29% decrease, and 40% increase. So we obviously know A and B, A and, sorry, A and D are not correct. So we've got 29%. So we've got to decide, is this increasing or decreasing? So if we look back at our problem, it says that the percent change from seven to five. So if we are going from seven to five, we would be decreasing. So we will have C as our answer, 29%, and that is decrease. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to another example. 
or here, if you want to, Ms. Gersh, you want to go over this and then I'll sure. do an example afterwards. So percent change, again, it is the, um, it is the, the change over the original equals percent over 100. But sometimes it'll tell you what the percent change is and you have to find the original value or the new value. And so the, the proportion still looks similar, but it is a little different. Remember on this side before we had to subtract. Well, if they're giving you the percent, the percent change, they already tell you what change the percent is, we have to subtract on the percent side. Now, most percents are uh, goes up to 100% because remember percent means per 100. So that's why we have 100 plus or minus the percent. So if the percent change is a 10% decrease, then we're going to go down 10%. So 100% minus 10% would be 90%. So then there, it would be 90% of the original. If it's a if it's a 20% increase, then we're going to add 20% to the 100. So then it would be 100% 120% of the original value. Okay, and to go over an example of what Ms. Gross just talked about, we have this one on here. So it says, a decade ago, the average class size at Boonville Middle School, whoops, hit the wrong button, Boonville Middle School was 20 students. Now it is 5% smaller. What is the average class size currently? So I'm going to get, so I can write on here for you guys. All right, so if we are going to look at that, she told us we do new over the original equals 100 plus or minus, depending on it is telling us increase or decrease, um, the percent that we are given, and that is over 100. Okay, so let's look back at this question. So he says a decade ago, the average size, class size at Benville Middle School was 20 students. So a decade ago, so we know that is the original. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on the bottom. And then it says now it is 5% smaller. So smaller, that means it is decreasing. So we're gonna do 100 minus five, because that's our 5% that I said it is now 5% smaller over 100. So now we know if you look up here, the only thing that they did not give us was new. So we are going to put an X in for new because that's what we're trying to solve for. So we're going to cross multiply again. And that gives us 100 X. And then I forgot to, I'm going to make a little note up here showing you guys 100 minus 5 gives you 95. Okay, so we have 100 times X, then we had 20 times 95, which gives us 1900. And then we had to divide each side by 100 to get X by itself. So mark those out, then you have, let me start another color. We have X equals 1900 divided by 100, which gives us 19. So the answer to our question would be that the average class size currently is now 19 students. So that would be our answer. Let me clear these out. Okay, and we have one, I think this is our last example. Um, this example um, is for also solving for new or original value. Um, this one is just a little bit different. So we kind of wanted to give you a couple of different examples to show you guys and make sure it makes sense. So we have, we're still gonna be using the same one. I'll read it first. Luther, a lawyer, currently charges clients an hourly rate of $357. That is 15% less than he used to charge. What was Luther's previous hourly rate? So we have still do the new over the original equals 100 plus or minus the percent. If I could spell percent right, that would help. All right, and then that is over 100. So to plug in here, we, they say that the cur currently charges clients an hourly rate of 357. So that is going to be our new rate, our new, 
um, our original is what we are trying to find because it says what was Luther's previous hourly rate. So that will be X. Then our percent, it says that is 15% less than he used to charge. So we will do 100 minus 15 over 100. So we can even go ahead before we start cross multiplying, I'll go ahead and do this. So 357 over X, 10 minus 15, that gives you 85. Oh, sorry, 100 minus 15, sorry, um, gives you 85 and then 100. So then we have to cross multiply and that will give us, I'm gonna do it on this side, that gives us 85 X equals 3,570. We wanna get X by itself, so we have to. I think it's 35,700. Oh, yep, yeah, you're right. I try to leave that zero out again. All right, 85 and then 85. So those mark out. So then we have, let me do it in a different color. X equals, if you do 35,700 divided by 85, that will leave us with 420. So our answer to that question, what was Luther's previous hourly rate would be $420. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is percent error. Percent error is similar to percent change, but this one is when you make a mistake. So big deal, this would happen in medicine. Let's say that you're um, working at a pharmacy and you um, are supposed to give, you know, so many milliliters of something and, it's, and you're off on, the millil on, off on your dosage. That would be a huge deal. If you're baking, and you're off on your baking, it might change the recipe a little bit, but not that big of a deal. So percent error in some um, jobs, this could be a big deal. But I wanna show you, look, difference over actual equals percent over 100. There's only one change. We still have the difference, so we're still subtracting here. But down here on the percent change was original, and now we have actual. So that's the only change, and then percent over 100 is still the same. So let's look at it. A student estimated a mass to be 250 grams, but upon carefully measuring it, he found or found the actual mass to be 240 grams. What is the percent error? So let's write down. We want the absolute value of the difference over the actual equals percent over 100. So we're gonna plug those numbers in. The difference, well, we gotta, find, we gotta find, calculate the difference, we gotta subtract here, 250 and 240. So we're gonna do 250 minus 240, and you all can do that in your head, I know, over the actual. Now, which one is the actual? A student estimated a mass to be 250, but upon carefully measuring it, found the actual mass to be 240. What is the percent error? So again, there, there's the actual mass is 240. So the actual would be 240. And then percent is what we're looking for. And so we can put X there over 100. And now we're gonna go ahead and calculate those out. But I guarantee you all already knew that 250 minus 240 was 10. So we're gonna go ahead and we can cross multiply. We can save ourselves a step. And we're gonna do 10 times 100 would be 1,000. And then two equals 240 times X. And when you do a thousand divided by 240, you get 4.16, and then the six is repeating over and over again. So I'm gonna leave it at this, 4.16, and it's 4.16%. That's how you did that problem, so 4.16% and then the six is repeating. So you can put that little bar notation on the top that tells you that that decimal is repeating over and over again. All right, let's look at the next one. Angela was baking a cake, but needed um, four and a half cups of flour. Uh-oh. But she accidentally put in five cups of flour. So again, not a huge deal, 
not it's going to change your recipe just a little bit but we want to see what her percent error is so let's go back to what we were talking about we remember we have the the absolute value of the difference so we want to subtract divided by the actual equals percent over 100. let's plug these values in so if she if we subtract here 5 minus 4.5 and then we divide by the actual. So actual is um, what she actually needed. So there's no, it doesn't, the last question says actual and this one doesn't. So you have to decide what is the actual amount. It's what's actually needed for the recipe. So four and a half cups is what's actually needed for the recipe. This was an accident. This was her like estimate of putting it in. But what she actually needed was 4.5. And then percent over 100, and we're solving per, per percent, so it'd be x over 100. Now, I know you all can do mental math. 5 minus 4.5 is just half. So we're going to go ahead and do that. That way we can cross multiply and save ourselves a step. So we're going to do half times 100. So half of 100 is 50, equals 4.5 times x. And then we're going to divide by 4.5. And 50 divided by 4.5 is 11.11111 so we're going to use that bar notation one more time it's 11.1 percent all right so i'm going to just kind of go over some important reminders from this lesson so we learned quite a few um formulas that you all are going to need to use um, in your assignments for the week. So we have percent change and we have one formula that, that helps you solve for the new or original value. And that is given right there, new over original equals 100 plus or minus percent over 100. Then we also have percent change when you are solving for the percent, you're trying to find the percent of something. So you have the absolute value of the difference over original equals percent over 100 and then the last one that Ms. Gross just talked about percent error and you do the absolute value of the difference over the actual equals percent over 100. So hopefully that helps you guys out and we will see you all on our next set puzzle. Bye guys. Bye.